Perfect. Okay, friends, uh, I am really excited this morning. Uh, this is really a special conversation because uh, I have with me my uh, dear friend, Satya Hinduja, who is joining me live from uh, Mumbai. And uh, it's great because we've been collaborating over the years. And this is the first time we've had an opportunity to really uh, have an in-depth conversation. A lot of things to unpack today. But before I get into the conversation, I want to really uh, do justice by introducing Satya. First of all, Satya, welcome. Thank so, you. Lovely to have you have me here, and thank you so much. Thank you, Satya. So this is all about Satya. So <clears throat> Satya, I just blush when I speak about you now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Already doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Satya Hinduja is a multidisciplinary artist working with a range of musical instruments, voice, and experimental electronic composition for spatial sound environments, helping bridge ancient practices of sound and energy medicine with emerging technologies, her work seeks to redefine the transformative power of sound. And let's kind of highlight that, the transformative power of sound. The capacity of certain tones, physical spaces, and symbolic interventions intend to sensitize the receptive listener. Her process demands a specific state, one that contains a ritualistic power suffused with energies that sit beyond the rational mind. And today when we go through this uh, conversation, we will actually have towards end of this uh, session, an immersive meditation uh, with her sound experience. So let, I'm really excited about that. Merging her mother's mother culture's origin of meditative sound and a passion for experimental electronica, Satya creates Alchemic Sonic Environments, ASC, which is a site-specific, multi-sensory, deep listening experience designed to invoke states of reflection, receptivity, and exchange. Satya's study of yoga sutras, Vedic philosophy, and ancient wisdom inspire the symbolism present within her work. Influenced by the metaphysical Hindu concept of Nada Brahma, the primordial sound of being, Satya researches the essence of resonance to develop ways of listening that lead to the neuronal regeneration of the int intelligent body. Guess what? I'm going to learn a lot today, Satya, so I'm really <laughs> excited too. <laughs> Since 2011, she has been researching and developing the ASC method, <clears throat> collaborating with artists, neuroscientists and healing arts practitioners while exhibiting at various platforms such as Sages and Scientists, which I've had the privilege of listening to with you live, TEDx, Berkeley India Exchange, and the International Yoga Festival. She is formerly trained musician with a Bachelor of Music and Film Scoring from Berkeley School of Music, Boston, and Masters in Electronic Music from Dubsport, New York. And it is indeed my pleasure to have my dear friend Satya live with us from Mumbai. So, that's that's quite a lot, you know what? So if, if at all somebody can talk about raising the vibration and using sound, I think you're the right person. <clears throat> so let's before well, we get before we get started, I want to ask you one question. Sure. What is the vision you are setting for the world today with sound? What is your vision? My vision, my intention, my focus is to bring awareness to people about thinking, starting to think about sound. Because we're so focused on sight, and we've just been sort of focusing on so much going on, so many distractions. This innate sense that we've had since 16 weeks from our mother, mother's womb, which is where it develops first, is the auditory. And we're so used to, yes, listening, talking, conversing, just being passive about it and very few people really understand that active listening and deep listening is a such a powerful tool to allow us to really go into many layers of transformation so that transformative power of sound which you were like let's highlight right. is actually the focus it's that that transformative power of sound. Wonderful. That's that's the intention we're going to set. And today, I think by the end of the end of the conversation, we will hopefully transform <clears throat> your lives with Satya's amazing music. Let's kind of get into uh, some of the mind stuff here, right? Uh, sound changes the way we see the word, uh, the world. And uh, I think there was a, in the Bible. It's in the beginning there was the word, and the word was God, right? In Eastern philosophy, we say A, U, and Ma, Om. Right, which is, which is translated in, in Islam, it could be Amin, or in, in, in Christianity, it could be Amen. So A, U, and Ma were the primordial sounds. So help us, help us. you're like a, a spiritual uh, person too, so we, let's kind of bridge primordial sound 
with life. Okay. So exactly like you mentioned about Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, um, Islam, right. shamanism, let's bring in all of them, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a sound interconnected. Unifying. Yeah, sound is the universe. Right. They always say uh, that there was first that vibration and then came matter. Right. And so we're so focused on not knowing that. And most people have to dig deeper to find that. So let's just say, you know, how do you bring that into everyday life, right? Mm -hmm. Like you said. Now, um, of course, I was in music school, so I studied music. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things in music school is ear training. Mm -hmm. You know, ear training is an active state of listening to different types of separate levels of music, separate chords, separate intonations, intervals. You know, there's so many levels and layers that we get into. How is the rhythm being formed? Um, what are the instrumentations? You know, so there's that act of listening. Then when you go into your um, leadership, there's so many leadership trainings that teach you how to speak, how to be an effective speaker and how to really, you know, bring attention and awareness to that that you're saying. So there's multiple layers of how this has been taught. The challenge though is it hasn't reached a point of unification. It's kind of little, little pieces, you know, all over the planet. There's like little chunks of things that we can focus in and then we forget about it. We focus in and we forget about it. But the idea is that if you really recognize and quantum physics is quantum, quantum mechanics is saying it now. Nikola Tesla said it, everything was energy, frequency, vibration, right? So it's literally energy, frequency, vibration. Just let's focus on just those three, mm -hmm. energy, frequency, vibration. So as we know, everything is vibrating, everything in the universe is vibrating. So everything that we touch, we feel is vibrating. Then the frequency aspect is what is the frequency that is being em e emitted right now? Mm -hmm. And from an external perspective, we aren't, uh, we don't have the control to do that. Mm -hmm. We don't have control because exactly like what's happening right now in the world, we don't have control over those frequencies, mm -hmm. but we have control over our own frequency and how we choose to respond to that vibration that will then transform the energy. Mm -hmm. So it's like we can start to become, the simplest way is, you know, just pause and just focus on what's the sound in your environment right now. Mm -hmm. What are you listening to from your left ear, from your right ear, from above, below, in front? The thing about sound is it's omnidirectional. Mm -hmm. It's like continuously floating in waves and the waves are so, you know, rampant sometimes and they're bouncing off walls and bouncing off all the things around you and then it's unseen the thing is it's unseen and right. because it's unseen we don't really have that awareness to be like wait what's the sound here what, what what's going on you know why is this bird chirping the way it is? Or why is this horn? I'm, f I'm living in Mumbai right now for the first <laughs> time in my life. <laughs> there is no sound, right? Yeah. Even New York. It's right. like two of the noisiest cities in the world. There's no sound. I want to and talk about Mumbai in a it's... minute. When you get my get yeah. from okay. the conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's like, wow, what, what am I hearing? What am I listening? Okay, that's the ex external. Then there's the internal. What am I feeling? Because going from vibration, frequency, energy, what am I feeling in this state right now as I'm listening? A simple thing, you know, we all have relationships, our families, our uh, sort of spouses, our friends. And there's all of this conversation sometimes we have and instantly we get affected. We get annoyed. We want to like retaliate. You know, there's all that interaction and waves that are going back and forth. But we're not focusing on, wait, what am I saying? What am I feeling? Mm -hmm. What are the words I'm using? Because every word, like, a like we spoke about, is vibration has power. 
has so much power that the intention of becoming first pausing and say listening becoming aware then becoming clear that what is the next word i'm going to use and really all of this is coming from our ancient cultures of meditation so i'm going to put you on the spot now because i know you're an sure. amazing voice and so we're going, to, <laughs> we're going to basically put your throat chakra to work why don't we why don't Beautiful. you do why don't you do a mantra for us why don't you actually give us uh, uh, some sounds and, and frequencies which will help us align us and that could be really beneficial for everybody why don't maybe you recite a mantra a chant whatever you feel like it's up to you sure um that which is coming right now is to do an overtone chant okay an overtone singing an and overtone can, just for someone and you can explain someone. that yeah Okay, so first I'll do it or I'll explain. First you do it, then you'll explain. Okay, fine. Yeah. So just to make sure that the microphone's not too loud because we've been talking and now I have to since you put me on the spot, I have to start singing. <laughs> yeah. And the good thing is that if anybody knows how to adjust sound, it's Satya. So hey, I, we're in good hands. We're in good hands. <laughs> so I invite all of you even though we really want to see because that's how we are really programmed but i invite all of you to for a moment close your eyes take a slow long deep breath in can you increase the voice slow. level a little bit higher sure. a little bit higher okay i was talking so i'll go back okay perfect okay so coming back <clears throat> close your eyes Take a slow breath in. Pause. And a slow breath out. Just feeling that everything, any tension in your shoulders, in your body is sort of resting slowly. You can continue with a cycle of counting 4 as you breathe in. and five as you breathe out and just after a while just go back to gentle breath start to bring your awareness to the silence the space around you and whenever you're ready you can gently take your time and even when you open your eyes just try to open your eyelids as slow as possible taking in the light of the room okay well so what the the vocals that i shared with all of you is actually right. called overtone singing and this is such an ancient practice coming from you know from losing my words right now yeah. but coming from uh tuvan backgrounds many others and actually what it is is really going this is going to the sort of the science and the mathematics of 
sound and how within the human body, toning and vocalization is one of the most powerful ways for us to really come back into a state of resonance, into a state of balance. And why that is, is because every, everything which we mentioned is sound has universal mathematics of the overtone series, the harmonic series, the harmonic principle. Just to make it a little bit easier, if you look at anything coming from nature, like a beautiful flower, um, the geometry of that flower connected to that pi principle Bonacci. is actually Fibonacci, right. is actually the same thing in the harmonic series. And what it is, it's, it starts with that one vibration and then the second rule is the rule of the octave. And then within the octave, octave for people that don't know music is a tone, uh, and then repeating the tone at a higher octave, at a higher frequency. Uh, so it's between the uh, and the uh, and then there are these harmonic ratios that basically you can sort of measure into the harmonic series. But the most mystic aspect of this is it's infinite. You can never stop this mathematical series. It continues, it continues. So now just imagine that, that taking that one sort of rule of the octave mm -hmm. and knowing that there are these harmonic series within it, as we're using our voice, all those harmonic series are activating our vagus nerve, our vagal tone are balancing our nervous system, connecting to our central nervous system all the way down into every cell in our body, right? Every muscle, every nerve, every cell. And so as we start to sing overtones, overtone, the, the, the magic of overtone is actually using the buccal cavity in the mouth, mm -hmm. chanting, like stating a certain sound, like one note, mm -hmm. but then opening up that with the movement of your tongue. So as you move your tongue, What's happening is you're able to start hearing those harmonics that we have in our voice anyway, but we are not mm -hmm. used to listening to it. And what mm -hmm. that does is, firstly, anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. So I invite it's free everyone medicine. to... It's free medicine. Just <laughs> go online, start to like tune in to different kind of overtone teachers. And I have some, if anyone's interested, I'd be happy yeah, to let's share. Post, yeah, let's post a link in the show notes. Yeah, like, you know, some curated yeah, like links. masters, right. definitely. And so what that, what that does and the, what that really does to the brain is actually once you start to, so generally when you overtone singing, I'm going to just kind of put my headphone out, yes. you, and you create this kind of cup so you hear more. Right. And then with the tongue, you're going back and forth in the buccal cavity. So, I don't know if you heard yeah. that subtle the curving. change of note, right. the curving. Right. I mean, even if you take a Tibetan singing bowl, Himalayan singing bowl, and you hit it, there is that vibration within it going into the harmonic series again. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. every time you sing or you chant or you make right. this over to sound or you play with an instrument which is external, it is playing with the frequencies all around us, the vibration all around us, and then bouncing back at us and mm -hmm. then raising our vibration. Beautiful. So, that's the bottom line in so, a simple way. So if you took a look at chanting, let's say the Gayatri Mantra, right, which is universally, you know, everybody knows about this, at least most people. Is, so is it important to kind of chant it in a certain frequency, in a certain tone? How would you chant it? So every individual has their own um, frequency. frequency and their right. own power note. And right. you'll only know that when you, you know, because a masculine voice is separate from a female voice, separate from right. a child's voice, separate right. from an old person's voice. So what you right. just do is you actually try to sing simple keys up and down. And then right. whatever feels the most right. resonant, resonant right. resonance in physics and in sound and music is what that frequency, when you hit that um, sweet spot, they call it, mm -hmm. that sweet spot is going to make that amplitude vibrate higher. 
So it's going to oh, become in focus. And what and the best way to find that resonant frequency, of course, you're not going to music lessons right now, so you're not going to right. know exactly. You can't measure it exactly, but you can base on your feeling. Everything in sound is about how you feel. So if a certain note makes you feel like you can breathe better after, you're feeling calmer, you're relaxed, and you're feeling like, wow, I'm, I'm actually opening up aspects of my mind, of my body, that's your resonant frequency. Great, beautiful. In fact, simple. this is something you said, maybe you should do this. There's so many music classes online and people can always take it. But why don't you start an online course, like how to connect with yourself with music? I mean, that's beautiful. I mean, help people find their frequency, right? I mean, that's something you should probably yeah. do. Just think, I just thought about it, right? I, I said, yeah, I can always go online. Yeah, I can download YouTube videos. I can listen to a lot. Everybody's offering online courses. But maybe there's, but try to find that personal frequency, right? And I think that's important. So now getting a little bit more deeper, we talked about Om, Ah, uh, Ooh, and Ma, like Om. So it's like Ah uh, is something, I guess, a stomach, Ooh. Uh, there's, there's a story we said Ah uh, is Om, uh, Ah is generation, stomach, Ooh uh, is the heart, and D is a destruction, a transformation, is G O D. Right, God. So uh, mm. it's very interesting. interesting. I, I saw it online, it and, and so when you look at it, like it's like the primordial sound. <laughs> Is there things which uh, you are in your body of work today? When you look at different, you kind of work across all cultures, and you're unified into your own uh, own. Uh, I would say a recipe called alchemic sonic environment. Can you just talk about your vision for ASC and how it came about, and what can we expect over the next? And the world has changed. Uh, this is, I guess, virtual is going to be the new normal. And especially for sound, it's perfect because it doesn't really, you just listen, right? So yeah. what are your thoughts? Well, you know, um, thank you for asking that question <laughs> because that's one of the biggest questions I keep asking myself every day. <laughs> the thing with it is sound is so universal. And in the past, without getting too much into story, but the journey of sound and listening for me as a child born in Bombay, you know, traveling all over, thanks to the family, right. blessings of the family that I was able to experience so much sound and music since in I was fact, a child. You were telling me about your mom being a big influence, always chanting and listening to her, your entire family has well, been inspired by her, right? Talking about my mom and talking about the Gayatri Mantra. The, in India, you get these little boxes that right. already have the mantras like pre-recorded and you can turn it on and off. I need one I mean, of those. She was like, yeah, we'll definitely will get it for you. But she had it on and I was like, I need to turn it off because we need to have this conversation. But, you know, so anyway, right. moment of mom. Right. Um, so basically, because of that experience, the exposure of I have family, Bombay, London, Geneva, New York, because of that exposure, I was always listening to music from different walks of life and different kinds. And plus, you know, there's the spiritual world mm. of mantras and chants and temples and rituals. And so they always felt like this disconnect between the two. And one world seemed cooler and the other world was like, eh, I don't want to be a part of this, but I know as a child, I would feel that grounding. So the quest led me to go study music, uh, film scoring and that was very interesting because it allowed me to really tap into the psychology of how sound is impacting mm -hmm. a story, right? A moment in time that you can share on screen, but why not share that in life? Because, you know, we again, going back to we're so focused on sight, let's watch, mm -hmm. experience, immerse, but then forget about it. So then that led me, that was a long journey, uh, about six and a half years. And that led me to kind of like questioning, no, I don't, there has to be more. And this is not the only thing that's there because it's stuck in this industry that's communicating this story. So I got into composing for art and, you know, beautiful mixed media installation art and artists. But that again felt like, oh, this is again limited. It's only for the art world. Mm -hmm. Then I got into electronic music because I was like, oh, electronic music is young and cool and fun and exciting. But then I realized after diving deep into that journey that my end goal is not here. So what then happened, and this is the key moment that actually began Alchemic Sonic Environment, was I was invited to speak at a talk in India called Ink Talks. Mm -hmm. and oh yeah, at with Lakshmi talk, Pathuri, I, dear friend. Yes, exactly. Right. And um, 
at this talk, I met a neurotechnologist who was talking about meditation, brain waves, and frequencies. And I was talking about my own understanding of electronic music and how it's impacting the brain because, you know, there's the spectrum of audio, like the auditory spectrum that we, as producers and composers, take you on a journey through, through the auditory. So he kind of expanded that vision for me, and I was like, this is exactly what I've been looking for my whole life. And this is where you and I met. You know, right. this is when that happened. It's like after that, all of this world of integrative medicine and, you know, getting into the science of the nervous system and deep listening and brain waves and all of that happened. And so what, what then that journey of uh, exploration, again, led me to is this realization that, that you know, sound is universal. It's everything. Right. But why is it that there's little pockets of people doing these unbelievable works around this subject matter, but nobody knows. And so the biggest vision that I have with Alchemic Sonic Environment is to unite the forces, mm -hmm. to bring them together so that this work can really transmute into healthcare, into education. Why is it that you, know, you have to go to music school for ear training? Why can't you have ear training for everyone? I mean, that's what it should be, right? Absolutely. And so in the ancient scriptures of the Vedas and Eastern philosophy, meditation is such a big uh, message and lesson. But me, myself, I had to go through this whole pathway mm -hmm. to reach a point where sound is the tool that's leading me to meditation, to spirituality, to transformation, to healing in, in the most essential rooted way because the system is a system of balancing one's energy focused on all the elements so alchemic sonic environment what it started to do was started to understand that the only way to firstly bring awareness to people is first give them an experience because if you talk about it right. you're not listening most people are not listening so first let's get them to experience it then let them open their mind and their heart, because sound is the fastest way to get to the heart as well. So you open the mind, you open the heart, and then we can kind of get into that state of shifting paradigms, raising vibrations. And so Alchemic Sonic Environment really wants to be in a platform to help bring this ecosystem together. Beautiful. And I think technology is such an amazing way for us to do it now. In fact, let's actually make a prediction, and this is something I feel very strongly about, that if 70% plus of the human body is water, then we can definitely energize it with sound and frequency. So I can be, I would say, make a bold statement saying that the future of healthcare, the future of healing, the future of wellness, sound is going to be a very, very integral part of it. And sound is free medicine. Right? Everybody, it's a democratizing. Like anybody from the from Dharavi in Mumbai to San Diego, right? We can literally use sound and frequency to connect. It's totally there's non-duality here, and I believe you know you, what you're doing at this time, especially we talk about COVID-19 and talk we talk about cytokine and a storm, and that's because of chronic low-grade inflammation. The our body goes into a immune overdrive, right? And if you're actually calm. If you're able to meditate, if you're able to reduce stress and reduce inflammation, and I really believe the reason for this conversation today is to really share the treasure trove of knowledge you have with the rest of the world, right? And I think we should really put a lot of information out coming. So going into the next topic, I want, I'm really excited because we've been talking about this, for you to introduce a project which you had worked on with your dear friend, Rowan Shreshta, a couple of years ago. and. Mm. Uh, Let's talk about the track and let's listen to it. And hopefully this time my microphone okay. doesn't go on mute. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm really excited because I think this is a preview to what the world can expect from Satya. Because Satya is, uh, I've over the years, I've, you know, I've known Satya and I've, uh, I've all, I'm always a biggest fan saying that you really need to externalize your internal knowledge the things you've learned she's a she's a consumer learner which all we all should be she's always talking to people neuroscientists physicians doctors you know i would say true emergence and that's really important because when you have a beginner's mind to music and not be biased with one school one thought one uh, one body of research and truly we can make alchemy and uh, so let's share your project and i'm excited this is the first time you get to listen to it 
Yeah, well, it's the first. Okay, so going back to Alchemic Sonic Environment, of course, the core recipe of Alchemic Sonic Environment is sound. Right. So as a part of that connection with the, the neurotechnologist who gave me a frequency 136.10, and I'm saying this openly because, as you said, it's, it is what it is. It is yeah. that frequency. It brought me into this... Uh, understanding because I had I had an experience where I lost time and space for three hours with mm. a frequency and I composed music around it for 20 minutes which Punacha you experienced at Sages right. and Scientists and it's Loved been it. that one experimental piece that has been traveling all over the planet and so what what happened to me then was I was like well I've been into music and exploring music since I was a child but nothing has made me stop mm -hmm. where I have no thoughts I have no, you know, cl like awareness of being in the physical body. I'm just focused on nothingness. And so what that did was that really made me understand that this is the key of actually writing music. Mm. Because music as an artist, you know, it's, it's subjective. It's, it's my feeling. It's my emotions. It's what I'm experiencing in life that I want to share. But once we get into tapping into frequencies and these frequencies are coming from the earth's spectrum again you know it's it's scientifically mapped astronomy right. um you know there's um uh, mathematics universal mathematics all of these things once you really tap into that then you are tapping into the vibration of everything and what that is doing because as humans we were so uh, blessed in the past to really be nature, in nature, with nature. We have come from nature, but we've been And guess what? Nature is from... teaching us a lot right now to reset. Yeah, and that's why, <laughs> I mean, nature is breathing for the yeah. first time, you know? So, I mean, it's really sad what's happening to many people, but nature is breathing. Right. So coming back for a moment, it's, <clears throat> it's that, um, I lost my train of thought. Um, frequency, you're talking about how frequency came together in this composition. Oh yeah, so right. so basically, so basically what that moment did was it gave me clarity that I want to start with an objective frequency always mm -hmm. connected to research, connected to doctors that have been doing this work for a really long time, um, researching integrative medicine with sound you know there's an amazing doctor in san diego that i've introduced you to yeah. dr jeffrey thompson amazing who does work he's incredible he <laughs> he works with bio tuning so mm -hmm. anyway there's so many aspects that made me realize okay this is the foundational frequency in indian classical music there's always that drone the tanpura right. the right. you know that sort of drone note because that is the key principle of meditative music is that drone continuous drone mm -hmm. so i said all right i'm going to take that and then add whatever needs right. to come from a subjective place so coming back to and that's where alchemic electronica was born by the way mm. the project is alchemic sonic environment but the sound is alchemic electronica and Beautiful. what it's doing is it's really combining, integrating. It's a multidisciplinary approach of bringing all the worlds of sound together with the strongest intention for transformation. So I personally, there's a lot of healing music out there. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't like to use the word healing per se, right. because I do know that when you use the word healing, it can kind of turn off. Some people right. might think, right. oh, it's just you know, something we don't woo -woo. Really right. woo woo, whatever. Right. So <clears throat> it became clear to me, I'm an artist. I want to, again, democratize it, get other artists involved, get them to mm -hmm. also write this kind of music. So coming back to Rohan, a couple of years ago, um, Rohan, who eventually his artist name is Nomad Within, right. decided to do his first, had an opportunity to do his first exhibition called Hanami. And it was a journey of him leaving the film world mm -hmm. because he's a film photographer in Mumbai and whoever knows him and knows Bollywood, it's very, take, it can take you over. So right. he decided to kind of, that's, we actually met in New York in an mm -hmm. underground club. <laughs> so that's how we really connected. It was like, okay, he, he gets it. He's not right. Right. You know, stuck in that box. Right. Anyway, so what we did was he traveled to Japan and started photographing Cherry Blossom, Hana mm -hmm. that, that is what Hanami 
the name Hanami is cherry blossom season. And so, as we all know, Japan is hugely connected to Buddhism. Hmm. And so this track, specifically the first release of Alchemic Electronica, Hanami Namyoho Rengekyo, is actually a deep listening experience. It's made with 444 hertz, and it incorporates different um, sounds, sounds, uh, a, an actual chanter, uh, an actual Soka Gakkai chanter of Namyoho Rengekyo's voice. It um, incorporates, you know, electronic pads and soundscapes for the purpose of having you really slow down that thinking mind to being and then just living that Beautiful. frequency. Beautiful. So, so we should Just get into it. Let's, we should listen. Yeah, we let's, listen let's to it. get into it. So before we get into let's it, I want to maybe, I want, I want you, you spoke about 444 mm. hertz. Can you uh, yeah. speak about 444, 432 and 528? The, you know, 528, the soul frequency of frequency on love. What is, what is your thoughts on that? So I would like actually to really get into that conversation once we've researched. Okay. It. Okay. Sounds you know. good. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll say I'll say one thing. I'll right. say one thing. There's so much out there about 432 and all of these frequencies, specific right. numbers. Um, just a little sort of side note. All of Western music right. is built on 440 hertz, mm. which is a standardized tuning system that is been going on since the 17th century. But everybody that is in this space of 432 hertz is actually talking about how sound was pre, like in, in Indian classical music, when you get into means and singing, you're mm. not stuck in a system of cut frequencies, right? It's mm. opening up the microtones. It's mm. like that is what's impacting the brain. So all of these other frequencies that is known to be, you know, right. all the other, whether it's love or 136.10 was told to me it's for love and the heart <laughs> chakra and I, I Still, I personally don't see it proven, and this right. is one of the biggest goals. Right. I focus on the feeling, to be honest with you. I've, I work with the doctor's frequencies, that for right. sure. Right. And then the rest, I'm focusing on feeling. And if it makes me feel something transformative, then I know it's right. I, I just love the don't answer. Know exactly <laughs> what it is. I love it. So. I think we, this is a journey. We'll take it together. So now, right now, let's get to feeling. Go All right. It. So... Um, before we start playing the track, um, I invite you all, it's going to be an eight minute, 14 second journey. Um, so I invite you all again, if you have an eye mask, great, put it on. If you have great headphones or good speaker system, put it on, um, close your eyes, bring your awareness back to the speed of your breath. Noticing the inhale and the exhale. And when thoughts arise in this experience, let them come, observe them, let them go. And if you can't let them go, it's okay. Just be with them. Start to become aware when it comes on to different parts of your ear, your left ear, your right ear, what sound is, what note, what instrument is capturing your attention. Now that's how you can move your thoughts into back into a state of presence because sound and listening brings you to a state of presence. <laughs> Oh. 
Apologies. Good. So awesome. So I think what we'll do is that I'm going to add this track and really uh, share it with everybody. Uh, and thank you again, Satya, for uh, really uh, sharing this on this conversation. So let's kind of maybe get into a little bit of um, the details with respect to your collaborations, right? You've been, I know you work very closely with our good friend Aurelio Hamner at Swaram. Who are some of the people who you look at out there and saying these are people who are doing amazing, you know, things when it comes to sound, healing, frequency? Um, Dr. John Beaulieu, who is in upstate New York, he's the founder of and maker of the biosonic tuning forks, which I have mm -hmm. in the other room, but I should have brought mm -hmm. it in here. Yeah. Um, Aurelio Hammer from Oroville, Svaram. He has the most incredible, in fact, a lot of the instruments you hear in this um, recording, sounds of the ocean and storm, are built in his beautiful grassroots project that now he's, you know, teaching people and wanting to build a campus. So that's kind of, you know, his vortex. And then Dr. Um, uh, Jeffrey Thompson, like I mentioned, who's very close to you. He works with checking your nervous system. He's, he's come up with a um, system of his own where he tests, he puts you in a vibroacoustic bed, firstly, for about eight to 15 minutes. And he tests while you're on that bed from zero to 200 hertz, because that's the low frequency where we feel in the body. He tests your nervous system, your heart rate, variability, and your energy levels. And then based on finding the threat, because most people that go to him are in like stress response, nonstop, straight right. up stress. So he finds that perfect threshold that's bringing you close to homeostasis and then gives you frequency medicine specific to you, personalized. Um, that as you listen to, and he works with delta waves, alpha waves. In fact, you can go online mm -hmm. and just Spotify, just type Dr. Jeffrey Thompson. You'll find a whole list of amazing tracks that you can listen to for deep listening mm -hmm. and healing. Um, he also uses the voice, going back to the voice and how the power of the voice. And he brings your own voice back into your own ears. So you're, ac you're actually not just understanding what's happening in the body, but then he's also giving you your own voice because the body heals itself. And so a state of resonance is already within ourselves. We just need to let go of the noise and find that music within, that resonance within. Um, then who else can I think of right now? Um, there is, oh, there's an incredible, incredible, incredible project by a doctor who's no more. Um, also, I learned about this work thanks to Aurelio's training. Um, it is basically called the, um, oh my God, I'm forgetting right now. <laughs> my brain is like we pausing can, for a second. Um, we can add it in our notes. Yeah, we'll add, we'll yeah we can links. add it in our list. Exactly. It's an inner ear test that tests your left ear and your right ear and sees which frequencies are actually dipping or cut out because of noise pollution and noise trauma, which actually leads to impacting the brain and learning disabilities and autism spectrum and all of that. And what he does is he repro Dr. Alfred Tomatis. Okay, yep. See, I had to talk about him and come back. He's no more. I right. wish we had had the chance to meet him in this time. Right. But really, he gives you headphones with a um, vibroacoustic device on the head and you're listening to a very specific program that helps heal your inner ear because we're listening from outer waves the cochlea the hair follicles and then it opens up though it's like going to the gym for your inner ear hmm. and then it opens up your brain and it's actually expanding your brain's potential which is anyways what neuroscientists say we only know six percent so I like, I, I, mean, I like the I had, sound gym, sound gym, you know? Yeah. That's like the workout. <laughs> <laughs> I had the experience myself because as usual, I'm like exploring and experiencing. And I, 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 one of the things I'm like, everybody should have this experience. Everybody in the planet should have this as like one of the basic sort of trainings to go through. 
Um, and then, of course, last but not least, Alexandre Tanou, who you've met yep. in New York. Amazing, man. He's one yeah. of the unbelievable masters of um, ethnomusicology. He was a musicologist, studied at Columbia University, had like a teacher's degree and worked with compositions. And he's one of the biggest reasons I feel uh, New York has become one of the main hubs of sound right now. Yeah. Like Aurelio is here. Right. Uh, Alexandre's in New York and you know there you must have heard or if no one has heard there's a place called womb center that's like a sound and yoga studio yeah. there's an amazing online project that's happening right now upstate New York every Sunday they do a beautiful binaural so left right really close uh, live meditation called the sound dojo um, you can check it out online. And by the way, do you have on Alchemic Sound, the sonic environment, do you on your website, do you have a blog or people can, we can kind of add some of these links to? Or we just add it after this. I, I'll put it online. Don't worry. Still make it working easier. on it. Still <laughs> working on it. Okay, good. So that's, I'll just add Every it. No worry. I mean, that's good. Yeah. No, I'll send it to you and then uh, we I'll can. I'll add it. Yeah, you sure. can. Yeah, add it to it. Perfect. So, yeah. So, so uh, so I guess one of the I mean, questions... there's many more, but I guess this is just Jonathan Goldman. You know, right. there's many, many more. But once you start exploring this world and please explore it, right. it's going right. to open a whole world of beautiful exploration, transformation and unbelievable lessons for, for all of us. From a time perspective, I want to make sure I kind of get to a certain topic. So one is I was reading an article you just wrote uh, on daily personal rituals. So I would like a lot for you to share in this time of uh, adversity, global anxiety, stress from, uh, from a somebody who is kind of really uh, focused on invigorating all the senses, the olfactory, the auditory. What are your what are the daily rituals I think everybody can take away listening to this conversation? I think the biggest thing that I would say is awareness as a first step. Mm -hmm. And then within that awareness, you know, we're all in our homes right now, locked up, right. you know, not going out for periods of time. So what I would say is really start becoming aware of what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Don't watch the news all the time. Um, what are you listening to? Start, start making time and space for deep listening experiences. Um, start vocalizing and chanting and just feeling there's this word called proprioception, which is mm -hmm. really feeling like even if right now as you're speaking, you can put your hand on your chest, everybody, mm -hmm. and just make noise, just see, you'll start mm -hmm. to feel the vibration just kind of, you know, communicating to you. And so even if you have moments of just speaking to yourself, breathing to yourself, just making sound, finding a note, learning music, that's the best thing I would say. And then really one of the most important things is diet, of course, mm -hmm. where we can get stuck into emotional eating and that's the last thing we want to do. And um, work with smell, the olfactory. The olfactory mm -hmm. is one of the most powerful like sound mediums to help trans transmute memories, transform our mind, our brain, our thoughts. So I would really say, you know, wake up in the morning and create a certain sort of pattern, a structure for your set an intention for your day, you know, have water, not just the normal water, bring in some herbs, allow for that subtle juices to kind of nourish you, get into um, light and incense, get into your state of listening, and make that, you know, and then movement, of course. Mm -hmm. How can I forget movement? Like yoga or running or even in your apartment, you can run. You can right. move. You can do jumping jacks. You can. Dance. So I think really dance. Right. Really finding an integrative method for oneself is really the best way to create a ritual. If, you know, of course, um, God, tune right. into him. Tune into right. the parent of us all, of the universe. And of course, a lot of people don't believe in God. Right. And it's okay. You right. can just focus in that which you don't know that's running all of this. And just tune in. Just take time and tune in. Because once you do that, then the focus of your day will suddenly shift. You'll mm -hmm. become more... Most people are stressed because of work. Right. And they're like, how am I going to... You know, so normally we would wake up and... Uh, you know, have some ritual and then go to work. But now right. it's like, I need to get to work somehow. So pause that, 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 right. that, anx the anxious, 
that call, just stop as soon as you notice it. And it's hard. It's not easy, but stop, right. take a step back, S walk slowly, right. slow meditation, walking meditation. You know, Absolutely. There's so many, there's so many ways that we can be creative. In fact, maybe some of you can come up with your own and share it with us. Right. Absolutely. I think now a lot of creativity going on right now. So my last topic is uh, going to be on, we, are, we got to do this a couple more times, but I want to kind of end, end on this uh, Nada Brahma. You, know, you are mm. kind of been studying this. It's been an inspiration. Can you provide us an insight into, first of all, the very ancient wisdom and uh, what, how, what's the impact it has, had, it has had on you? I feel like not, of an, not an expert to have this conversation because I'm still a student. Doesn't matter. But all I can say, all I can <laughs> say is that the journey of sound that led me to exploring all these different facets eventually brought me back home to Nada Brahma. Nada Brahma, Nada means sound and Brahman is the universe. Going back to going back to Christianity and shamanism and you know how we used to speak as humans uh, you know working with stones. So it's really bringing you back to that awareness that sound is everything but what I started to explore as I started getting deeper is really Nada Brahma is one aspect, very important aspect of the whole Vedic scriptures, of the way the Vedic structure was built of life and how they would work with astronomy, astrology, mathematics. Um, they were rituals, chanting, being aware of what sound they're going to be using, what sound they're speaking. Then there's you know, within Nada Yoga, there's Nada Brahma, there's struck sound, which is the sound that we use to manifest life. And then there's the unstruck sound, which is called the Anahata, mm -hmm. which is the unstruck, which is that sound, which is all around us. So really all of this wisdom, um, a lot of alchemic sonic environments and roots are coming from the awareness of sound is everything, Nada Brahma, Nada, Nada is what is creation now that is what is manifestation so um actually what i found in research is that the yajurveda if i'm not wrong i want to make sure no yaturveda okay. is the one that really brings you to that awareness of nada yoga and nada brahma mm -hmm. but within that structure you know the, there's samveda which is all about the sh sanskrit mantras and chants there's the rig veda that's the shloka so it really it's like a spiral vortex of really mm -hmm. going deeper and deeper and deeper but the essence of it all you know if we forget all of the if we forget all of the sort of the traditional structures of life because it was a very different timeline like 5,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago BCE. The core of it all, the core awareness, the core information is no matter what you're connected to, no matter what religion you're connected to, spirituality you're connected to, um, school of thought you're connected to, what is that sound that mm -hmm. you are connecting to to create life and that's really to me in my understanding the essence of nada nada brahma of course nada brahma takes you to uh, practices of uh, yoga nidra with listening and bringing awareness to little aspects of your body and your you know your little finger fingers your arms but that's again practicing that aspect of nada uh, Brahma, but now the Brahma to me really is that primal sound of being. Mm. It's becoming aware that there is a sound whether we hear it or not. You know, there is vibration whether we hear it or not. I mean, there's like over 200 thunderstorms happening out in space mm -hmm. that's creating that vibration that's impacting the earth and like impacting our every little minuscule life. But we don't we're not again thinking sound. Right. So really Nada Nada Brahma is about becoming aware that there is a primal sound of beingness, whether it's in the trees, whether it's in ourselves, whether it's in the plants and the animals, in different cultures, there's always that sound which is so it's the only way we today, if we didn't have sound, how would we survive this situation, right? It's like becoming aware how important it is.
And that's where you really tap into that ancient wisdom because that, tran that ancient wisdom of Nada Brahma is actually focusing on the transcendental sound. It's right. that cosmic sound. It's really understanding that with this awareness, I can bring happiness to my life, whatever the situation may be. Right. How I speak, how I feel, how I experience this, I have the power to change it. I can, I have the power within myself. And that's to me, the ancient wisdom of Nada Brahma. Beautiful. So you know, it's uh, Rumi had this uh, quote, it says, God's language is silence. Everything else is poor translation. And I guess we need to have the silence and the stillness to listen to our own inner voice and, and everything around us, right? Nature is, is wisdom. And today I think we are learning from that uh, the essence of nature. So one of the things I want to kind of, uh, on this note, I want to kind of uh, maybe kind of uh, go to the next topic, which is really what I do every day is to kind of share uh, important updates uh, in the world. And today artists are really making a big difference. And I'm really excited. Uh, I think today there, there are healers and the healthcare people on the front line. And today we're listening to artists all over the world. They're playing DJing, they're playing music, they're really, you know, connecting from their bedrooms. And, you know, it's amazing. So this is some of the news I wanted to share. And uh, for everybody who's listening today, what I call the good news update, right? Uh, so one, one is, uh, you know, uh, I, I love what uh, uh, John Bon Jovi is doing, right? He's uh, really doing some amazing stuff. So right now he's bringing the soul of our global community together and asking people to send in their stories, create a verse, and to go into a song, you can't do what you do, okay? And you, you, you do what you can, and he wants everybody to send it in. So I think there are people today who are really kind of using that innate talent to connect the world together. And artists are doing it again. They always did it in times of crisis. I also love what he's doing when it comes to his kitchen. He has the JB John Bon Jovi Soul Kitchen. And what he's doing now recently during the pandemic, he's been spending six days a week washing dishes at his restaurant to ensure people in need have food, right? He yeah. and his wife, one chef and the restaurant manager pull together meals so that everyone can pick them up outside. So this is amazing wow. what artists like him are doing. And there is m multiple examples you know, of what people are doing. Lady Gaga is announcing she's in donating to America's food fund, which is amazing. Um, but I also like some of the things which I was just reading on, uh, what's his, uh, I guess uh, DJ D nice, Derek Jones. You know about what he's been, he's been kind of creating quite a sensation on the internet. So the call today is to really get artists to once again, raise the vibration, raise the frequency. And uh, Satya, I'm looking forward to you uh, from Mumbai, right? Where it all started uh, to hopefully uh, rolling out some of these uh, sounds and frequencies so we can all learn uh, and uh, together heal, right? The world needs it today more than ever before. And also, I think what you bring is this unique insight into the East, the West, combining it together, right? So it's also very relevant to the Gen Z, Gen X, you know, all the Gens, and uh, also back <laughs> it with science. And I think uh, since you come from a family of uh, healthcare, I guess uh, you can say that you can now be a pioneer the next generation of uh, sound as medicine, frequency and energy That's... as medicine. So thank you again. Any any. Uh, Closing thoughts before we end this uh, podcast, or the beginning of this podcast, many more to come, but any, any thoughts and your vision for the world? All I can say is feel more than see, listen more than you hear, and find a new vibration for yourself. Beautiful. So maybe on that note, why don't you uh, close this with, uh, with a mantra or a chant or a meditation? What do we feel like? Well, let's do it for a minute. Um, all right. Let's bring back the Sansula, which is okay. the moment of tech break. Okay. We'll, so we'll edit it all together. Is, right. Okay. The Sansula is this beautiful finger piano, some kalimba. And... Um, all I'll ask you to do is, again, focus deeply on listening, which means close your eyes. And the reason why we close our eyes is because the eyes take up so much energy that we want to give it a rest and allow for listening to naturally transform, transmute, and take you wherever it needs to take you.
Thank you, Satya, for this amazing alchemy. And uh, I'm going to uh, uh, keep nudging you to do a couple of things. One is uh, share your voice uh, to the world, share your frequency and sound, and also share the amazing body of knowledge which you have accumulated and curated over the years. I think the world needs it now more than ever before. And I'm so glad that uh, we found some time this morning to connect my, between Mumbai and San Diego. Uh, my heart is in India, my heart is in the US. So uh, I think uh, this is, we are truly are now, I think, non-local. We truly are connected in respective of space and time, right? Thank you. So lots of love. Well, I want to say, I want to say thank you for having me. Thank you for being the most incredible human that you are. You. And I hope more and more people get to meet you personally, because you know, you are that transformational force that really is pushing everyone to raise their vibration. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank, thank you. you. I, I think it takes a village to bring up a child. And I think we have, we, we all in this together and, uh, so I'm grateful to be part of this journey together. And I'm so much, I, I am really excited and invigorated. So uh, I think to everybody listening, uh, thanks again. Uh, sorry for a little bit of a technology glitch, but like we said, infinite flexibility is the key to immortality, yoga vashishta. And in times today, infinite flexibility is, is something we need, resilience. This is what we're talking about. So thank you, Satya. Let's talk again. I so. just want to say Punacha has the most incredible acronyms. He like <laughs> throws them and you're like, what? How did you get it all in one line, in one word? <laughs> but thank, thank you. you all. And if you guys want to connect anyway, Facebook, SoundCloud, all of I'm that. I'm going to put all the links is... out. Okay. Yeah, and and so this track, this track is on SoundCloud released today and it's right. going to be released in about a week, I guess, or less than a week in all the different Spotify's and everything, all the platforms. So I'm going to link to it. Be, yeah, perfect. And Thank the more, you more important chat. thing, we're going to, I'm going to see a plan of all your, your plans for the next year. So we can just kind of, yes, every time yes, you release something, you're, have a conversation. Yay. Yeah, you're, ha you're, you're, it's one of the reasons why it's released is because of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sethi. I love to you. And you're, your you're the force. <laughs> Lots of love. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.